So the first example of a secure default is Django, right? Django is a very popular web framework in Python. And by default, Django ships with an ORM. You're never exposed to writing raw SQL queries. It just ships with an ORM. You can just use object queries and you'll be able to start querying the database and so on. You do have a function called extra, that is an object dot extra, and you can pass a raw query into object dot extra. And then if you have a raw query with a where clause, you still have SQL injection. But that is a violation of the secure default. Only a use of an extra function with a hard-coded where clause parameter can result in SQL injection. So the idea here is that you are still looking for SQL injection, but you're not scanning 10,000 different SQL injection rules. You are looking for a violation of secure default because you already know that Django has ORMs which are protected against SQL injection. And because you have Django and they're protected against SQL injection, you have the ability to look for a specific violation of that value. Very similar to this is Ruby on Rails, where you can create a model, and in that model, you can declare the model by default doesn't allow you to do mass assignment, which means you can't set all possible parameters and force the backend system to accept those parameters, and that causes an authorization bypass, it causes mass assignment. This was the vulnerability that led to GitHub being compromised in 2013. Not, not compromised, it was a bug bounty style finding in 2013, where somebody was able to tamper with a parameter called isAdmin, and they became the GitHub administrator because they were able to tamper with that parameter. And because Ruby on Rails by default was vulnerable to mass assignment, today Ruby on Rails is not vulnerable because by default, they have made sure that people can only access certain attributes when they are serializing or deserializing data. Right? So that's something you have. So the violation of this secure default would be if this functionality is turned off or if this flag is turned off, right? So that would be a violation of secure default. Java Spring Boots ships with CSRF protection, but developers can't turn it off. If it's turned off, then that is a violation of security default. So the idea here is that you're not looking for every possible scenario, you're looking for secure default violations.